Hey, welcome back to our growth group session. This is number three. We are getting our, our way through this season already. And uh, we just finished a weekend where we were talking about how we've been rescued by the love of a Savior. Amen. Pretty amazing. Yeah, amen. And I'm here with my father-in-law, Pastor Ken, yeah. and uh, my main mentor, I always yeah. call him, and uh, just so grateful for your ministry, Dad, you. and uh, your you. example to me, and uh, and, you. and just your love for our family and our oh, church. Yes. And uh, I know everybody appreciates the way that you watch out for uh, so many people. Really, mm. it's amazing. Yeah, um, as we think about what we're going to talk about in this group session, uh, I want to read a passage of scripture. It's from Romans chapter five, verse mm. eight. And it says, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Yes. Yes. You know, uh, yeah. when you think about what we've been saved from, yes, that's something. And I always love how, whenever I watch you, uh, as you talk maybe about communion or something like that, you always get mm. so emotional. Hmm. Because it still means so much to it you. It does. You know, when you think about what you've been saved from. Yes. But I was also thinking back to your past life hmm. uh, as a Marine, you yeah. know, as you were, uh, I don't know, how old were you when you served in the Philippines? Well, let's see. I went to the Philippines when I was, uh, I believe I'd turned 18 then. I went in the Marine Corps when I was uh, 17 and a half. And then boot camp, second ITR, some tanks. And then uh, I was shipped off to the Philippines. So I believe I was about 18 years old, maybe 18, two months okay. years old. So wow. I was a pretty young guy. Man, that must have been kind of weird to be so far from home. Yes and no. You know, I did not have a home life, really. Okay. I left home when I was 15, went on my own, been on my own ever since. So, yeah, I, I guess I didn't really have that home life. Yeah. And uh, I just wanted to serve my country. And so whatever they said Go do, I went and did. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> neat. Well, you had a really interesting job when you were there in the Philippines. And tell us a little bit about that. Well, I was a, a what they call a turnkey, a brig chaser. I went after, I didn't go after them, but I took prisoners in. Uh, when the MPs would bring them in, why we would uh, sign, meet them at the door, sign them in, and then they would get a cell to be in. Uh, about 95, I would say, about 95% of the young men that came in were there because they got drunk and got in trouble. Okay. Got in a fight, tore up stuff or whatever. But they weren't bad guys. They just couldn't handle their alcohol. They were young like I was. And so uh, they would come in. I would meet them. At, but I've thought about that so many times, being in prison, you yeah. know, like, I think sometimes any of us can put ourselves in prison, not with the bars, but in prison. Mm -hmm. So they would come and I would, uh, I was a turnkey then. And so I had all the buttons before me that opened all the gates throughout the prison, the main gates, the, the prison gates, everybody, nobody could move without me pressing a button. And so I was a turnkey for after, for most of the time I was there of the 18 months. And uh, so I would press the button, but I had a, an assistant that would meet him at the gate, bring him in. And uh, so they would, they would come in. The cell wasn't very big. It was probably about 10 by 10. Okay. Pretty, pretty small cell. And when that prison door closed, it seems as though it almost woke them up. Oh, I bet. They, they realized I'm behind bars. I cannot escape from this place. Mm. And I could see the, almost a terror in her eyes. But at 18, you don't care. <laughs> you know? Okay. And so, and so, you know, so I'll tell you a couple of things about prison, about it. Uh, we had one guy come in, and uh, he was uh, a Navy fella, uh, uh, really a nice guy when he was sober, but he came in, he was drunk. Came through the gate, my assistant made him, but well, he didn't like my assistant. So when they took the handcuffs off of him, he said to his assistant, he said, what do you want to, want me to do? He said, just follow me. We're going to take, he tapped him on the shoulder and, and my assistant turned around and he hit him in the mouth and broke off half of his, one of his fr front tooth. Well, the results of that, he lost a, a, a rank over it. Oh, I'm and, sure. uh, you know, we took him to, to uh, to court, and he la lost a rank over it, and uh, spent about five days in our prison. And so, you know, that was a real wake up to that young oh, yeah. boy. 
you know, too. But as I think back to it at that now, uh, the other one was a fellow that um, uh, I let out of the prison in the morning, about two in the morning, he wanted to go bathroom. And he'd been out drinking. So I pressed the button. My assistant walked him back there. And, and you know, the thing about being in prison, well, let me tell you this. So this fella was using the bathroom and turned around and peed on my assistant's foot. Oh, man. Well, that didn't sit good with my assistant, needless to say. <laughs> and so we won't discuss what happened, but he got back into his prison and uh, so funny things would happen all the time. But here's the thing about being in prison. You don't, you, you, go, you go to bed when we tell you to go to bed. You get up when we tell you to get up. You go eat when we tell you to eat. Uh, at breakfast, at lunch. The fact is you can't go eat without me being there with my sawed-off shotgun, a forty-five on my hip, and a club in my other hand. And there'd no be two of us. <laughs> no freedom. There was no freedom. I mean, to think about being in prison and so locked in, uh, there's, there's, you can't, you couldn't hardly breathe without our permission. Yeah. And the same with folks when we get in a prison of some circumstance of life, uh, someone else is telling us what to do. Something else is telling us what to do and not the Lord. Then we're sort of not our own any longer. We belong to them. They were, they belong to me. And that's a terrible way to be. So I thought about it many times. I'm thankful that I never ended up in prison. Yeah. Well, it makes me thankful as you describe what's it like to be in captivity. It makes me so thankful for how we've been rescued, hmm. you know, set free. Yes. And, and it's a blessing when you think about Christ, why, well, while we were still sinning. Yes, amen. He died for us, set us free. So we would like for you now to go to your group and uh, get, get together and, and just talk about what's God speaking to you? How are you receiving this freedom that we have as we've been hmm. rescued? Have a great group.